Before we jump into today's show, I've got a really exciting announcement to make. The autumn cohorts for Start Your Podcast group program are now open. There are five dates between September and October, and it's a six-week program that will get you launched before Christmas. So if podcasting was on your to-do list this year, if you really want to get your podcast up and done by the end of 2023, then come and join me for one of those cohorts and let's make it happen. I have a free masterclass available for you called Understanding the Power of Podcasting. You can go over to donnaede.com forward slash masterclass, watch the masterclass, and get access to that enrolment. I hope to see you in one of the autumn cohorts very soon. That's donnaede.com forward slash masterclass. Let's get back to the show. You're listening to the Wedding Procast UK, the place to be if you are a UK wedding professional looking to grow and streamline your business. I'm your host, Donna Ede, 10 year wedding photography veteran and CEO at the Society of Professional Wedding Vendors. If you want to grow and streamline your business, this is the podcast for you. Make sure you hit subscribe where you listen or join our email list at www spwv.co.uk. You'll find the sign up form at the bottom of every episode and by doing so you won't miss a thing. So let's jump into today's show. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. So today's episode, we have Kate's story from Book More Brides on the show, which is absolutely fantastic. Do have to give a little caveat that I had some audio issues myself this week in recording the episode. So I do apologize for that. But Kate's voice came in loud and clear. And what she had to say was so powerful that I needed to put it up for you. So do listen in and do forgive me for my poor sound quality. Kate has a free download for you on their website, bookmorebrides.com. It is our price shopper guide and it will help you to get over to your customers what your value is so they can immediately see it and so that you can get more bookings more quickly. So do head over and grab that once you've listened to the episode and I will speak to you soon. Bye for now. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I am so excited to share with you today's guest. We have Kate Story with us from Bookmore Brides. I am so excited for this episode because it's another one with a visitor from across the pond. I love having international guests on the show. Welcome, Kate. It's so lovely to have you here today. Thank you so much, Donna. Really excited to be here and to Hopefully, I have a great conversation that's going to give your your listeners some something to put into practice in their business. Oh, I could listen to you talk all day. I love accents and I love it when people from across the pond say Donna. I love the way you say Donna. <laughs> it's my Midwest, uh, you know, nasal accent coming in because isn't it? And it's so funny to hear that because usually Americans don't hear that. We don't hear, oh, I lo- unless you're from the South, right? You know, then people say, or New York, you know, somewhere where it's like a really clear accent, you know, so we don't usually hear that in the Midwest. We always think, well, we don't have an accent, but I imagine you probably feel the same. So, <laughs> yeah. And you know what? That is exactly it because I am in roughly, I'm the, the East Midlands in the UK, as we call it. So I'm a middle Midlands kind of girl as well. And yeah, I don't feel like I have an accent at all, but if I go North or South, they'll go, you do have an accent. Oh, yeah. no, I just talk normal. <laughs> All right, practice like there's nothing there. <laughs> so, Kate, tell us a little bit about Bookmore Brides and what it is that you do in your business. Yeah, so uh, so my husband Nick and I are the owners of Bookmore Brides, and uh, what our goal is really most wedding business owners, especially, you know, photographers, uh, you know, are great at what they do, but could maybe use a little bit of help with uh, finding and booking leads online, right? Uh, That's where we all really need to be. That's something this past, you know, uh, year and a half has really taught us is that we have to step up our game online, right? Mm. So at Book More Brides, We teach simple and effective marketing and sales strategies so that you can make more money with less effort and get back to working with more of your perfect couples doing what you love to do 
which is getting behind your camera, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It definitely was for me. Um, I was I was on Bookmore Brides when I was a young photographer in the game, uh, sort of 10, 10 years ago now. So um, yeah, I completely get that. And that is really good because um, as I, I said to you uh, before we started recording, I run the Society of Professional Wedding Vendors. And one of our big key things is to help businesses with the business side of their business so they can get back to doing what they love which is picking up a camera because that is it's that kind of oh that's all the boring stuff that I don't want to deal with I just want to be creative I just want to make that cake I just want to be playing with paper and creating invitations and um, that's where they thrive Um, but if you haven't got the leads coming in if you haven't got the business side sorted if you've not got a structure in place to handle your invoicing and things like that you haven't really got a business. So I'm so, so chuffed to have you here. And we're going to be having a conversation today all about how we can actually stand out in a crowded market without lowering our prices, um, which is something that I think a lot of vendors struggle with. They struggle with that, you know, how am I going to get people to notice me um I'll put a flash sale on or you know how am I going to get someone to notice me oh I'll tell them that they're going to save this much and and like knock my prices down and it's really not the best way to go about it so I'm not going to talk anymore I'm going to hand over to you so that you can give us because you're going to give us three ways that we can stand out in a crowd without doing that dreadful lowering our prices or discounting so over to you Kate Absolutely. So really what this is about is at the heart of this is it's it's a fear that maybe we're not able to compete, right? That, you know, we feel like we have to lower our prices because we have concerns or, you know, kind of those deep down fears that maybe our photography doesn't stack up against others. And so it's in, in order to make a sale, especially, especially if, you know, your client bulks and says, oh, well, that's so much more expensive than I thought it was going to be, right? Uh, really, it's understanding and knowing that your service is worth something. So that's the very first thing that I want you to understand. I want all of your listeners to understand is that you have to understand that your work is worth something. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I find that a lot of wedding professionals, but especially photographers and videographers, this is an art. It's more than just a hobby or anything like that. A lot of times when you get behind that camera, this is something that you are putting your heart and your soul and your creative energy into. Like I said, this is something that a lot of wedding business owners feel with their business in different ways, but especially with photographers um, and and videographers and anyone who has kind of that artist based, uh, you know, feel to them. It's it feels like we're we're selling our creativity which one doesn't feel great, but two, it can make us feel very vulnerable. Mm. So when we understand, first of all, that our services are worth something and it is okay to charge a fair price for them, then that's where we need to start. That's really the foundation, making sure that we understand that what you do is valuable to your couples because they need what you offer for their wedding. They need someone to be able to to give them that that beautiful location for their wedding that uh that excellent entertainment that's going to make the whole night flow so so well and just make everybody feel like this was just an incredible event it was a night out as well as a celebration of the two people that were being married um you know they want beautiful photos uh, of their in a record of their wedding day right whatever it is that you do you, your service has value. So that in exchange has worth and monetary value. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you are doing is you are offering something to them. You are giving them something and offering something to them that is going to make their wedding day better. And that is worth an exchange of financial means 
because it's going to have a, a true impact on their day. So if we can start from that point and have that foundation and knowing that our services are worth something, I think that gives us much more confidence to be able to know that we can charge a fair price, that we don't have to lower our price in order to be worth that exchange. So that's the very first spot that we have to start with. That's the foundation. And that's so good. And I will tell you for why, because you've touched on two points there that I've been trying to drum home to my listeners um, and to my members, which is um, one that your worth, your personal worth is not attached to your pricing. It's about the worth of your service. It's about the value your service has. Um, And so that is something that we spoke about um, in episode 69 I think it was with Hannah Walker talking about better sales conversations Um, and it's something that I've been talking about over this past month where we've been talking about pricing on the Facebook page is that you know your personal worth is not attached to it and when we are creative people it is so hard sometimes to separate yourself from that creative action of creating that service and feeling like that is worth something because like you said when you are a creator you're just like well this is my art and I do it because I love it and it's like then putting a putting that price tag on it can just feel icky and it's your service that you're selling the artwork you can say the artwork comes for free but it's actually the time and you know all of the uh, scheduling and the day that you spend with them and all of that that you're charging for if it makes you feel better absolutely well and it's it is it does feel like you said it, it makes people feel very uncomfortable and it makes them feel like they are selling their their creativity and selling out right like Mm. that is I think and I I apologize for using the photographer example so much but it's like I feel like that's the one that uh you know and this like I said this translates to many different wedding business owners but I think in particular those uh wedding professionals tend to feel a very deep connection to the results of what comes out uh and the, the work that they're doing while they're at the wedding but also you know what comes out of that and so that that that's where we a lot of that discomfort comes from because if we could, I, f- I find that a lot of wedding professionals feel that if they could give it away for free, they would because it's like it's it's so deeply ingrained within them and it's so important to them to be able to share this talent that they have with others. But at the same time, if you truly want to make this something more than just a hobby, something more than what you just do on the side, if you love it so much that you want to make this your career, then you have to bring in the the monetary side of it. And like you said, it doesn't, your creativity doesn't have to be attached to the financial gain. It is an exchange of, of services. And the thing is, when you are positioning yourself correctly, which is the second part I'll talk about in a second, when you're positioning yourself correctly, your couples are going to be so excited because you're giving them what they want that they're going to be like, absolutely, I want to pay because I'm so grateful for what you have done and you have provided for me. Please, what can I pay you? Like, think about that. If you were to, if you were to say uh, as a, for a friend or something, oh, I want to give this as a gift to you. Likely, if your friend is going to be so excited, they're saying, no, 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 I want to give you something for this because they recognize the worth and the value. Mm. So we have to come from that mindset. That's, that is worth something. Yeah. And that was that was the second thing that I wanted to pull on is that I think a lot of um, people probably need to do some work. I know I am somebody who needs to do this work. And it is that understanding that you are worth being paid, like not your personal worth, but what you're doing is worth an amount of money. And you have to get to a point where you are comfortable with that amount. I was going to give the um, example of, you know, how. um dogs and horses they sense fear if you fear them they will know it and they will become uncomfortable I feel it's almost the same with clients not that I'm calling our clients dogs but you know they if you are uncomfortable with your pricing if you can't just sit back and go yeah these are my prices blah 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 if you can't say that with confidence and calm they will pick up on it and they don't know what it is but subconsciously it's it's just not quite right. And I think it can come off even online in your marketing, the way you market yourself, the words that you use, that if you are not in complete like alignment with what you're charging, there will be a disconnect there for your clients. So there's work there, I think, that might need to be done. 
I completely agree. Absolutely. It is, it is, it comes down to a confidence and a mindset. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, that's why that's so important to start with that as the foundation and then to, but like you said, online, you know, uh, having that confidence online. So if I may, that's actually, that's a great transition into my, my second uh, area that I really, it's, it's important for us to focus on. So that way we can you know, uh, make more sales without lowering our prices is to make sure that we are being extremely clear online about what we do, who we serve, and how we can benefit these couples that we work with. Okay. So the way that we can do this is by making sure that we are being very specific, not generic. Mm -hmm. Many wedding professionals will say things like, uh, oh, I, you know, I'm going to, for example, a wedding planner will let often say, I take the stress out of your wedding day or a wedding venue will say, you know, the, the most beautiful, uh, you know, location to say your I do's and everything. And, you know, photographers will say, you know, I'll capture, uh, you know, every heartfelt moment. These are all very true statements. And I Mm. certainly hope you do that because they're kind of standard elements, right? (laughs) You need to do those things as part of your job. However, what is it? How do you do that differently? What are your couples like? Why do they appreciate that? What is the goal and the why behind what it is that they truly want out of your service? Okay. We need to understand that our clients have a deeper reason for hiring us than just wanting a beautiful location, than just wanting, uh, you know, delicious food, than wanting, um, you know, someone to help take care of the details of their wedding day. There's, there's a deeper reason to that. And it's our job to figure out what that is because it's different for each wedding professional. And that is what's going to make you stand out online and in person. Mm. So we have to do the work and ask ourselves, what is it that our couples truly desire from our service for their wedding day? And I'll give you an example of that. So we have in our, in our services, in our coaching programs, we have several different students, but an example of two photographers in particular, I wanted to, to give, because it was just the clearest examples that I have had here where we had one photographer, it's a couple based in Chicago, uh, which is, you know, a major metropolitan area, very chic, you know, it's, it's very, um, you know, it, it, so there are a lot of their couples that they worked with were looking for very artistic level wedding photos. They wanted their photos to look, uh, their couples wanted their wedding photos to look gallery worthy. Like you could have put this up in, in some sort of a gallery somewhere and people would, or when they, uh, even better, when their guests, their friends walk into their home years later and say, is that you guys? Oh my gosh, that is stunning. They wanted it to look, their couples wanted their wedding photos to look like pieces of art. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that is very clear there. Their style is also very dark and moody and, you know, romantic and has some, you know, darker colors, especially in the, not only in the photography itself, but in the editing process, there's, you know, a lot of things that come into that. Right. But contrast that with a photographer that we work with who is located in Seattle and her style is one where she does light posing. It's very light and bright and airy. Her couples want some direction, but they, they don't want to be like posed. They don't want that artistic, you know, where it feels like, you know, it's, it's something that has to be directed and everything like that. They want a little bit of, you know, okay, yeah, try, turn your body a little bit this way so that they get the best angles, mm. but Other than that, they don't want, you know, to feel like they're stiffly posed or anything like that. Okay. Now think about on a website. Now, say you've got these two different styles and you have one website. If you were to have photos of both, you have this dark, moody, artistic style of photography in some of the pictures. And then you have light and bright and airy with couples that look more natural and, you know, like they're kind of laughing and, you know, things that are are kind of more natural moments. Mm. If a couple lands on there and on this one website with both of these images, they're going to say, wait a minute, which, which one is it? Which one does this photographer do? And it enters confusion and uncertainty into th- those couple, that couple's minds and makes them say, well, wait a second, I, what am I going to get out of my wedding photos? Am I going to end up with this dark, moody style, which they may not like? 
or I'm going to end up with this bright and airy style, which they may not like. Mm -hmm. You have to be clear and specific on what style you offer, where your strengths are. Now, does that mean you can't do both? Of course not. You can do both, but we need to be clear in terms of what we are communicating. So that way our couples know what to expect, because when they know what to expect, they're going to feel more confident in our skill level, in our, our artistic abilities, in our knowledge of knowing that what they want out of their wedding day. Okay. So this is the why that we have to get down to. Why do they want a specific set of wedding photos? Well, that Chicago couple, they want it because they want their friends to walk into their their home and say, oh my gosh, that is the most stunning picture of you guys. That's from your wedding. Whereas the couples in Seattle want want their guests to come in, their friends and everything to come in and see the pictures on their wall and say, oh, that was the sweetest moment from your wedding. I can't believe you guys got that. Oh, how nice. Those are two very different reactions, right? Yeah. So when we are clear in, and this comes from both a visual side and a, a writing side, okay? We have to make sure that we're communicating this clearly in both ways. That is going to help you to stand out and help you to move forward much more quickly draw, with these couples that come to you, drawing in the ones who want what you offer. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, gently, moving along the ones that are not going to be happy with your style so that they can go find their perfect wedding pro. And so you're not stressed out trying to convince them why you are, you know, the right one for them. So that's the second tip is making sure you are being extremely clear in both your writing and your visual style of who you serve, how you serve them and what their why is. Oh my gosh, that is so good because I literally talked to my audience a little while ago about um, their ICA and how working, like making sure that you're showing what it is that you want to do on your website through the images that you're using is going to create more of those kind of couples coming to you and that by the time they get to the meeting where you're like, oh, I'm no good at sales conversation, I'm no good at selling, that kind of thing isn't an issue because they're already sold by the point of time that they get to you. I could literally see those two different photographers' websites in my head. And I know that that Chicago photographers' images are all of that similar edit, that similar style, that similar mood. And it just, if, if that's what you love, you're drawn to it. If you don't want it, then you don't go. And when you were talking about the couple looking at a website that had both images on and then being confused, all I wanted to shout out was a confused mind says no. And it is so true. If you are giving mixed messages with the images you're putting out there, and this isn't just photographers, you know, this works with cakes, this works with everything. If you are putting out two different styles of what it is that you do, you are going to confuse people. So I I gave an example when I was um, talking in my ICA video about if you love to do barn weddings and your favorite cake to make is a naked cake with fruit or flowers, some kind of variation of that, that's what you want to show on your website. That's all they should be seeing. Because if they see fondant icing and piping, then they're going to they're going to get one get confused, like, well, what what is it that they do but also you're going to get people that come to you and go oh I want a really highly piped cake and you're going to go oh really I don't like to and do you that. don't feel like that when you're working you want to feel excited about what you're doing so um, yes love- and th- that's another reason why it's you know it's so important is it's not just for it's I mean it's primarily let's say that it's primarily for our couples so that way there you don't have a confused mind they understand what it is that you offer, whether or not you're the right person for them, but also the other side of that is so that you are enjoying your work, that you are able to be happy in what you're doing, because that's the thing, especially, especially when we're starting out, we, we feel like we don't want to turn away customers, right? We don't want to turn away business. So the first mistake that we make is being far too generic. Oh, sure. Whatever you want, I'll do it for you. Happy to, because you just want to make a sale, but the more generic and broad we are the, the more confused people become. And if you're for everybody, you're for nobody because they just have such a hard time understanding. But secondly, you end up 
finding yourself, like you said, going, oh, really, that's that's not what I want to do. And you find yourself, uh, you know, not enjoying your work. And in some time, you know, if it gets bad enough, you end up, you know, um, regretting it. You end up, you know, uh, feeling like uh, this disenchantment with your own business. And if you've chosen to make this your livelihood, I mean, what a terrible thing. You've gone into business, you know, to have your own business because you want to enjoy yourself. You want to enjoy the work that you do and have control and a say over what you do. But if you put yourself in these positions, that's not what you're going to get. You're going to end up in, uh, you know, a, a, a business that you don't enjoy with couples that you don't enjoy working with and wondering how you got there and how to get yeah. out of it. Yeah. And I feel like that can actually impact on the service you're providing as well. And, you know, one of the big things with the society is we're here to provide high levels of customer service. If you're not enjoying what you're doing it's going to be really easy to just go, oh yeah, I'll get to it tomorrow. Oh, I'll just email them later. And you start to get laps with it. So it's definitely important. And I love what you just said about beginners in the industry, taking on everything. The best way to excel and get somewhere in your business as quickly as possible is to hone in on what you're doing because I again I'm being very visual today you are bringing images to my head but I'm seeing this um this wedding vendor with you know taking every single job and then putting all of those images on their website you know whether they be a planner or a cake maker whatever and it just looks like a wedding store threw up all over their website and people will come and a confused mind says no. So you're going to get more people come to your website that are going to go, oh, I'm not really sure what they do and, and walk away. But mm -hmm. if you are a beginner photographer or a beginner cake maker and you are putting out consistently the same type of style, the same feel to what you're doing, then couples are going to be drawn to you more quickly because they're going to understand what you do. And you're going to be able to then increase your prices more quickly because you're going to get known for that rather than people sort of sitting there going, oh, I don't know what they do. So we'll just stay away. So true. All right. And then the, the third tip of, you know, really making sure that we are able to get more sales without lowering our prices is to make sure that you do not provide your rate sheet right away. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see, you know, how, how people will react to this. And I think mm -hmm. especially people who are, are experts in sales, you know, because there's a lot of different opinions on this. <laughs> there are a lot. Uh, some people will say, obviously, you want to put your rates on online or on your website, um, or you want to provide them as soon as a couple asks for them because you want to be transparent. You want to be easy to work with. You don't want to seem like you're hiding anything, right? Mm -hmm. So we think that we're being useful and helpful by providing rates right away or by having them on our website. But I really challenge you to think about what is going to happen once you do this. If you are to have your rates on there before you can have a conversation, before you can help to build the demand, not only for what you offer, but also the way that you offer it and how this is going to fit in their lifestyle, how it's going to fit in their wedding, this very specific day that they are, that they are having, then this is what puts us into that price box and makes us feel like we are are just a price to our couples. It, it doesn't allow us to explain that worth. Now, we did talk a little bit earlier. Uh, we touched on this and, and I will agree here that it, this is why it's so important to be clear on your website, but also making sure that you are doing the goal of your website and any communications that you're putting out online, social media, email communications, anything, is to help make sure that you are warming people up enough that by the time they get to a conversation, they're basically 75% of the way there, right? Mm. That they are pre-sold. They're like, wow, they, they feel like they have learned so much. Uh, you know, you've been so clear on your website, in your social media posts, in your emails that perhaps they've been getting. They're like, I know exactly what this person offers. I know exactly what I'm going to get out of it. And yes, this is what I'm looking for. All they need to figure out is do, do they have, you know, do you have their date available? And, you know, making sure that the price is, is within their budget. Okay. Mm. So 
if we don't have the opportunity to connect with them and give them uh, you know, a clear understanding of which package is also right for them. Because that's the thing. A lot of times we put things on there and if it's especially, especially if it is just the price, you know, so um, this package is, you know, three hours of coverage and you get this many photos and, you know, this is, this is the rate, uh, you know, th- this, uh, this cake is, uh, you know, this many tiers, this type of decoration, here's the price. When we are not able to describe how those packages or those services fit for that person, that unique person, which that's only going to come from a conversation with you where you can talk with them and understand them and really confirm that why behind why they are are working with you, why they're interested in you, right? Step number two that we talked about. You need to have that conversation to confirm with them that, yes, this is what they're looking for. And, okay, this is the best fit for you. Because not only will that help you to make the right sale for the right person, but also it's going to give them confidence that you truly care about them, that you care about making their wedding day better, not just making a sale. And that's Mm -hmm. going to not only make you feel good, it's going to make them feel good because they're like, okay, this is someone who truly wants to be Uh, you know, part of my wedding day, because sometimes we forget this too, is that when we are chosen, when we are hired for a couple's wedding day, we become part of it. We become Mm. part of their wedding story. We are, this is not something, and and that we understand this, I think, from a, a surface, maybe slightly deeper level that yes, we play an important role but we become part of this couple's wedding story. So we have to build that relationship with them. We have to feel, we have to make them feel confident that they made the right choice, that they chose the one right venue for them, that they chose the one right baker for them, the one right photographer, DJ, any of those things. We have to make them feel confident in that. And that's going to come from that conversation. So how do we fix this? How do we make sure that we're not just, you know, that we're not seeming, you know, uh, elusive or, um, you know, uh, trying to scam them by not providing our prices? Well, I, I'd like to propose a middle ground, and that would be to give a range of prices. That way you're able to properly weed out couples that, you know, maybe are a little budget <laughs> for what you do. Or perhaps for couples who are looking for a high-end service and know that you can play in that arena, right? So what we often find, and and this is where we have to, there's no one size fits all when it comes to this. We have to think about our ideal audience, our ideal clients that we're working with, what type of services we offer. Are they high-end? Are they more affordable? Are they right in the middle, right? These are all things that we have to consider. So if you are perhaps more towards that affordable or middle end where you tend to have more objections from a price point, Mm -hmm. uh, then you might say, you know, uh, packages range from this to this. So that way they under or you could say on average couples, you know, couples spend this. And that kind of gives a nice middle ground because it helps the couples understand whether or not you're in the ballpark for them, whether or not you're in the right area price-wise for them. But also it makes sure that if you know, it, it, you're not giving away everything and, and just, here you go, here's my rates. Let me know what you think. You know, it still gives you the opportunity to open up the door for a conversation and to say that, to say our prices range from here. However, you know, I invite you to, you know, uh, to hop on a call with us to book a, a 15 minute consultation so I can help direct you and find the right package for you. Because again, that allows us to be transparent in our, our, you know, our purpose here that we do want to serve them, but also making sure that we're not providing a one size fits all uh, solution for them or for making that, you know, not being able to build the demand and help them understand which one is the right fit for them. So again, they can feel confident. So that's the third tip, making sure that you are not just giving it all away, that you are giving an opportunity for a conversation Mm -hmm. and finding a good middle ground for that. I think that is so important and it's 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 so funny like that we're talking about these things at the moment because 
What I um, did the other day was we had a conversation about pricing on your website. It was on my um, page. We were talking, should you put your prices on your website? Shouldn't you put your prices on your website? And and I loved what you said because it aligned with what I said, which is I am of the opinion that a lot of people don't want to put their prices on their website because they think the competition is going to undercut them. Um, so that's a big reason why people don't do it. And I feel like that's something they don't necessarily need to be afraid of. Um, but I do agree that if you put the prices up there, it does help in the fact that, you know, people will go, OK, that's out of my budget, so I'll move on. But like you say, if you've got the list of this is what you get for this price, it leaves no wiggle room in their head. They don't feel like they need to have a conversation with you because they think they know it all. Whereas you haven't actually been able to say, oh, and if you don't want this, then we can adjust this and we can, you know, move things around. So having that conversation is so important. But what I actually um, said was my best tip would be to have prices start from and my average client spends. So the fact that you said that, it's just like music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is. It's so important. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. We don't we don't have to go to extremes. Right. We don't have to to say it's it's all or nothing in any area of our wedding business. Right. There is there is I, I've always felt there is a there's a middle ground. There is a, a place where you can find a sweet spot between too little information and too much information and give that's part of because that's the thing. It's part of our job as the wedding professional is to help to prescribe the right solution for them. Mm -hmm. You know, giving them a one size fits all, uh, like I said, just, it makes it more difficult for them to understand. And it also, most of our couples have never planned a wedding before. They have no idea whether or not what is the right package. Maybe there are some things that they haven't thought about that they like, oh, gosh, I didn't think about whether or not I wanted to have a cocktail hour. Oh, that's a good question. I, I'll, I'll be you know perfectly honest. That's what happens with, with us for our wedding. We had not planned for a cocktail hour. Now, when we got married, we were quite young. We were 23 and 24. And so you know, our budget was a little tight. We were kind of squeezing it as much as we could, kind of barely making it for the venue that we chose as it was. Mm. But that was actually one of the ways that the venue ended up selling us. And I, this is, this will go into all their conversations. So I won't, I won't go too far into it, maybe for another, another time, <laughs> but uh, we were, we were, you know, not sure because it was such a large chunk of, of money. And it's one of the first decisions you have to make, right. When you're too, when you're uh, planning your wedding. And I remember the sales representative saying, okay, well, if you'll book with us, we will throw in the cocktail hour for you would that make your decision easier? We're like, oh, absolutely. You know, so that's what we end up doing because think about what that cocktail hour required for them to do from a cost basis. Mm. They had to, they, she already knew from looking at her calendar that that room was not being used that night. So she has not lost money on it. In fact, now she's making money because we were saying yes to it, mm. but she paid for, you know, two staff members to come around with the drinks and, and, you know, paid for that hourly rate, whatever that might have been. Mm. But now she has made a multiple thousand dollar sale by offering, you know, to have that available. So that was able that by having that conversation, she was able to make that sale. But if she had just said, well, here it is, let me know, are you going to do a Friday night, a Saturday night, a Sunday afternoon, you know, give me a call, we'll set something up. I would have been lost and I would have said, no, thank you. And I would have found somebody who could make it clear for me. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's so, so important to have those conversations. But like we've said throughout this, like everything that you're doing from your social media, from your emails to your website, everything should be leading them on a path that is saying they hit this box, they hit this box, they hit this box. So when it comes to them looking at your price, like, okay, what's the next stage? Okay, let's me, let me look at their pricing. Um, then it is just like, are they in budget? Because I want to have a conversation about, you know, what we can do together. And if they've got prices start from, and that from price is like, you know, they've got more than that in their budget for it. They're like, okay. And if the average client spends roughly what they're thinking of, they know that they're likely to get what they want because they can see on your website what you do. And what you do is what you do for your average client. So, you know, they're going to know that most of what they see on your website 
is going to be within their budget if that's the average spend. So I think that is so, so good. Oh, thank you so much. Could you just go over those three points again, just so that we've got them, that we're like, people can write them down if they've missed them. What are those three ways to um, stand out in the crowd without lowering your prices? Yes. Well, the first one is making sure that you set the foundation of understanding that your work is worth something and understanding that the the talent that you have and the service that you provide is going to make your couple's day better. And that is worth a financial investment from their end. And that your creativity, the way that you said it, Don, I love that that your creativity is not tied to the financial worth. The second part is making sure that we are doing the work to stand out online and being very clear about what we do, what we do well, and how that's going to benefit our clients on their wedding day. And the third one is making sure that we find a sweet spot when it comes to providing our rates online. And there's, like we said, there's a lot of different opinion on, opinions on this, but I I truly believe that if we simply leave it up to price alone, just listing out our prices willy-nilly, just having them posted with no conversation, it is going to make it so much harder for our couples to understand our worth, what is the right package for them. So really making sure that you are positioning your pricing in a way online and in your conversations when they request those rates in a way that's going to allow you to prescribe the right package for them. So that way they understand that you care about helping them get the right fit and that you are able to build the demand demand for the right service for them. And then you both feel confident knowing that this is the right fit moving forward. They know that you're not in it just to make a sale and you feel confident knowing that this is a couple you can truly serve and that this is going to be a wonderful wedding for you to be part of, of their wedding story. Thank you so much, Kate. That is really, really good. I just really think that that just kind of ties in a lot of what I've been talking about recently. But in context of standing out from the crowd, it opens up that story telling opportunity and being able to have that conversation with your clients and guiding them. That is offering that high level of customer service. If you just put your prices up on your website, you're doing them a disservice because they might think that they can't get what they want from you. Thank you so, so much, Kate, for coming and spending some time with us today. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Wonderful talking with you. You too. Wasn't she great, guys? I absolutely loved the information that Kate gave in this episode. Don't forget our Price Shopper Guide. It's a free download on their website, bookmorebrides.com. And I will see you next week. Bye for now. Don't forget to hit those stars and leave a review of the podcast where you listen if you found value in what you heard today. It's a free way you can help the podcast reach more people just like you.